Uh, Joseph Mara is a doctor of nursing practice and has a, an established practice in Altoona, Pennsylvania called the Urgent Care Center, open 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., five days a week. Practicing traditional medicine in conjunction with the more holistic approach, Joe is also a hypnotherapist, a Reiki master, an intuitive healer, and a spiritual counselor. Joe offers a full range of healthcare modalities addressing most health concerns and has made it his mission to be of service to all in all areas of body, mind, and spirit, which translates to health in its wholeness or holistic health care. Joe's teachings have been heard all over the globe on his Universal Talk radio show. He hosts many unconventional and informative, and informative guest speakers from the metaphysical, spiritual, and paranormal communities from all over the world. He does this to help us with connecting the dots to this puzzle we called life, or at, the le or at the least, paint a more complete picture of humanity's true potential. So welcome, Joe. Good morning. And uh, I don't know if this is on here. Can you go? All right. So, okay. Thank you for having me. Um, it's very exciting to be here with all these other guests. Uh, I feel privileged, and uh, I just want to give my personal thanks to Mark and the crew here for, for your minds. And uh, I'd like to start by raising the vibratory frequency of this uh, particular place, if everybody's okay with that. Any, anybody opposed to that? You don't have to participate, but uh, basically, I'd like to do a clearing and a healing. And uh, a lot of people may not even realize this, but you some people out there may have come just for this reason. I mean, we're led by the heart to different locations, and you don't realize why you've come. You just know you were drawn to a particular area, and you go away with whether it be a mind, a body, or a spirit. Healing, clearing, however you want to look at it. So um, if you just want to get into a comfortable position, and just close your eyes. Take a couple deep breaths in through the nose and out the mouth. And basically, we're here to free the minds. So open your minds to the possibilities of what you've heard over the past couple of days. And what I'd like to do today is bring things into a more positive note. Because, you know, when you look around and you see all the negativity that's before you or around you, it's difficult to go to that positive place. And where do you go? So basically, there's some YouTubes that are out there that have some positive things, and what I'd like to promote today is uh, a clearing, and what I'd like to do also is to get everybody to raise the vibratory frequency so that you can take in all the positives here today and maybe go away with uh, a gift of a healing, whether it be the mind, the body, or the spirit. Okay, so a couple deep breaths in through the nose and out the mouth. Now, what I'd like you to do is visualize and imagine this pure white light of unconditional love of light coming through the crown chakra at the top of your head, radiating and descending downward over the body, pushing out any negativity, any blockages, or any attachments. You can physically feel this warm, free-flowing energy of love and light as it descends downward over the body opening up your pineal gland, opening up that third eye. You can visualize and imagine as it's pushing out any negativity, any blockages, or any attachments. It's penetrating deep, real deep, deep into every organ, every tissue, and every cell of your being. And as this unconditional love of light penetrates and radiates and descends downward over the face, over the eyes and the ears and the nose and the mouth. You can visualize and imagine that Mother Earth is sending her energy through your feet as a grounding, pushing up through the feet and the ankles and your lower legs. You can almost feel this warm, free-flowing energy of love and light as it pushes out any negativity, any blockages, or any attachments. Meanwhile, this unconditional love of light from the highest source of creation comes down through the crown over your face and down into your throat region open up that throat chakra down over the shoulders and the arms out your hands radiating and penetrating deep 
pushing down into the heart chakra, opening up that heart chakra so that all your chakra centers can radiate and communicate harmoniously with one another. Meanwhile, Mother Earth is sending her love up over the knees and the thighs and your pelvis and into your abdomen, opening up that sacral chakra, your root chakra, heading up into the abdomen, into your solar plexus chakra, penetrating deep into all your organs, including the liver and the spleen and the gallbladder and the bladder, small and large intestines and the stomach, all the blood products of the body and your bones and skin. As it pushes out any negativity, any blockages or any attachments. And as Mother Earth ascends up into the solar plexus chakra and into the heart, you can feel this mixing of the two energies from Mother Earth and from this energy, from this high source of creation, as it mixes and blends with the heart chakra. Now, as you can visualize and imagine yourself in total perfection, in unconditional love, almost as an observer looking at you as you're that perfection of love and light. And all of humanity is one. So consider tapping into the heart of the person next to you. It was almost like a string that attaches so that we all become one, so that we can raise the vibratory frequency of ourselves, tap into Mother Earth, and also tap into this high source of creation to allow this information to flow freely. You can picture all the symbols that, of sacred geometry may be coming through right now. You can feel that vibratory change in your being, asking to increase that vibratory frequency so that you can become that highest potential in this perfect uh, time and place and space. Allow yourself to take a moment and feel this vibratory frequency or oscillation down to the very molecular level of your being. Feel that energy as it flows freely. Feel it down to the atomic place in space. You can almost visualize it oscillating back and forth and as you increase your vibratory frequency you see it oscillate just a little bit faster. Now, while you're in this particular place in space uh, from the highest source of creation, calling upon all the angels or the gods of these highest, for the highest good of humanity, remember to go here in this particular place in space for meditation so when things get too tough or rough for you, you can always go within to find the answers that you need. You can also visualize and imagine that there, there's a healing going on, not just with yourself, but everyone around you. Sending that unconditional love of light from yourself down into Mother Earth for her healing and ease of passing with this transition that we're all about to go through. Everybody you can visualize and imagine, if you wish, to tap into one another and raise the vibratory frequency of this hall so that you can take in the highest good for everyone that's involved. Now, visualize and imagine that Mother Earth is ready to pull her energies back and this highest source of creation is ready to pull the energy back but you're in total gratitude to be in touch with your inner self and with Mother Earth and the universe, knowing that you're much more than this human being, this human body that sits before you. For all is energy. Now, allow Mother Earth to pull her energies back from your heart, descending downward over the body, down over the solar plexus and sacral chakra, the root chakra, down your legs and out your feet. Meanwhile, this highest source of creation energy is pulling back and ascending from the heart into the throat chakra, up over the face, the third eye, and the crown chakra, and pulling back all together now. 
Allow yourself to be in gratitude. Thank your angels and guides. Thank yourself for allowing yourself to go to this particular place in space. Take a couple deep breaths in through the nose and out the mouth. Wiggle your fingers and toes and coming out feeling better than before. Okay, everybody open their eyes now. Take a few deep breaths in. Move your fingers and toes. And so how do you feel? Okay. <laughs> so that's a, a little tip on going within. And basically, you can do that yourself. You are your own healer. And uh, Alfred Weber and myself have put out some YouTubes for distance healing. Um, <laughs> Basically, within the past couple of weeks, I've come to the point where I'm watching all the, the things that are going on around us, and it could be considered disaster. In, in many cases, in a third-dimensional frame of mind, it is. But where do you go to get out of this rut, if you will? Because, you know, living in this three-dimensional... Oh, how should I put it? Living in 3D... I guess you could say, is, is uh, all mass, all heaviness. And if you align yourself with the duality of 3D, there's hot, cold, good, bad, up, down. So why not allow yourself to align with the positive attributes of all the things in duality rather than going down the negative past or path? I mean, we've been forced into this. I mean, you've heard the other speakers tell you, you know, whether it be chemtrails or harp or whether it's... Uh, uh, things that they are putting in our food. It is what it is. And if you open your eyes, you're going to see exactly what these speakers have been talking to you about. And uh, it is a reality, but we're multidimensional beings. And we have a choice. That's what free will is about. You can choose whether you can align yourself with the negativity that's around you, or you can rise above it and be an observer looking down at the situation. It's much easier to skirt the tops of the waves than to go up and down and up and down because right now we're in a change we're in a transition and I'm sure you all realize this one minute you're feeling great and the next minute you're in a you're down and relationships and all kind of other things whether it be cellular memories of past lives or within this lifetime are gonna come to surface and that's what this transitional change is all about I, I believe personally that this is about a transition the 2012 phenomenon, if you want to call it that, it might not exactly happen on that date. In fact, I really believe it's happening now. And you can watch it. If you open your eyes, you're seeing all the stuff that's going on around you. And basically, if you look at Mother Earth, she's a sentient being also. She's trying to push out all these cellular, cellular memories like we are of all the wars and all the other negativity that's been done to her over the years. And she's in a transition too. She's going to ascend. And I really think if we're talking about freer minds here and consciousness, that's what's really what humanity's about. I think we've come here, or we're spiritual beings living out a human experience for just that, the experience. I think we're children of the universe. I think that we have free will, and you can choose whatever path you want to go down for your own experience. And sometimes you have to have that opposition in order for you to grow. I mean, without opposition, what is there? You're in heaven. So a lot of people have come here from other places, other dimensions. And uh, sometimes it's difficult to wrap your head around all of this until you start to do the research. And then you become the experiencer, and then you have both. And like Laura said, we've had many different speakers here from all walks of life, from different parts of the world. And... Uh, we're pretty much saying the same thing. It's about an evolution of humanity. It's about consciousness. It's about energy. And whether you perceive it with your five senses or whether you go that extra step and open your mind just enough to say, hmm, what if? Maybe we are more. How come there are people that are born into this that can be psychic and can do other things, telekinesis, telepathy? You know, and then you wonder, well, how come... How come not everybody can do this? So at this particular place and space of time, there are so many variables that influence the answers to these questions. And 
not one person has all the answers exactly. But if you go to conferences like this, you're going to see a little bit of your truth. And you'll say, hey, I, I believe exactly what that person's saying. Because when you talk about consciousness, you talk about the truth. And I thought that once I found the truth through all my research and experiences, that I could stand here and tell you this is one plus one is two. This is the truth. But everybody's truth out there is different because you're at a different level of awareness. We're not all on the same level. Some people are stuck in 3D because of their fear. And they're okay because you know what? I was there a couple years ago. I can't judge them because I was there. And I'm not saying higher is better. It's just evolution. It's just another place to be. And when you reach these higher realms, you can see. It's just like trying to tell your friend, oh my gosh, you need to get away from her. She's terrible for you. But they can't see it. They need to experience it and see it for themselves. And then hindsight, they look back and say, wow, you were really right. I never really realized where I was at because I was, I was so in the thick of things. So when you look at the truth, and that's what I want to talk a little bit about today, every individual here has a different truth because your, your truth is where your awareness is. Like you may not believe in ETs, but you might believe in angels. But next week, you might see a UFO and be like, oh my God, I, now I know they exist. So now you become the person that believes in angels and ETs. And the people you're trying to convince and say, look, they exist, I've seen one. Why don't you believe me? It gets frustrating sometimes because you see what other people don't. But instead of getting frustrated, sometimes it's just a matter of planting that seed and allowing them to process it, chew on it for a while, and... Like Aaron said yesterday, you might plant that seed and that person will come back to that sometime down the line and it'll just click and it'll be like, oh my gosh, that's what he meant back then when he said that. And so I really think that we are all one because we're all energy. We just perceive things differently because we're limited in this three-dimensional body with five senses. So... <laughs> What's beyond our vision? If you look at the spectrum of light, it's this. Our vision is right here, out of all this. So what is beyond that? Just because we can't perceive it, does that mean it doesn't exist? I mean, look at gravity. I don't, I don't know that I can perceive it other than I was told by a scientist that it, it's there. I mean, I have five senses that tell me what's around me to perceive things with. So does that mean it doesn't exist if I can't perceive it? So if you open your mind up just enough to say what if, then all of a sudden you allow for your own spiritual growth. So I wanted to talk about my journey that got me to this point. Right now I have an urgent care center. I do mainstream medicine, um, family medicine. It started out, uh, I was born and raised a, a Roman Catholic, and I always questioned like, this just doesn't seem right. You mean to tell me that if there's a baby born on the other side of the planet, and just by virtue of them being born into that religion, they're going to go to hell? That never made sense to me. I, I just, I'm like, wait a minute, that doesn't, this forgiving, loving God that's up here, that's, you know, and fire and brimstone, and so it's a fear factor. So when you do the research into different religions, and you talk to different people all over the world, you start to put the pieces to this puzzle together and your, your eyes get open. You know, I went through traditional medicine, and you know, I have my doctorate. I have an associate, bachelor's, master's, doctorate. What does that mean? It, it, it means to the three-dimensional world, it means something. It's like, wow, this person has credentials, so that means something. But you go higher up, like the spiritual people in the fourth and fifth dimension looking down, they're like, well, that's, that's 3D stuff. That really doesn't mean anything when you're up here. So it's all relative. So I'm no better than anybody else. I've just remembered. And I'm not fully in awareness yet, but the reason I wanted to talk about my, where I came from and where I am is it's important to see that not only did I do the research, but I'm experiencing these things. And when you experience them, and it doesn't fall into textbook, like if a patient comes into me and they're telling me they can bilocate and her husband's sitting there confirming and saying, yeah, she was downstairs on the computer, and I was, or no, I was upstairs on the computer, she was downstairs sitting, and a thought, she's like, wonder what my husband's doing, and she's standing beside him looking at what's going on here. So she comes into me wanting medication to make that stop. And I'm like, I said, wait a minute, let me get this straight. You were at two places at one time. 
hmm, okay, so normally I have, what, 10, 15 minutes of visit. Well, that visit was about an hour and 15 minutes because I'm like, yeah, tell me more. This is interesting. And so you, they don't teach you this stuff in school, you know, and you're like, either I can say, yep, you're crazy, here's some medication, and just like most of the practitioners, doctors give as a medication because they don't understand it, so they're afraid of it. They're afraid of you because you can do something they can't, so we better suppress it and give you a medication. So with my experience, not only have I had uh, personal experiences growing up, but also in my education, and I've traveled all over the world, well, not all over the world, but all over the United States, let's put it that way, and whether it be the astral realm or uh, the ET realm, I went to the ESETI ranch, and uh, I mean, just almost every avenue, the Bigfoot thing. I mean, I was into all this stuff. I was like, boy, I really would like to explore this to see if these things really exist. And the more you research, the more you're opening up to the possibilities of some of this stuff. But really, it's all related. It's all energy. It's all your perspective. And um, it's difficult to give each person the same answer because you all have your own truth. So you have to have your own discernment about you. And so when you're talking to somebody, and uh, it's important to allow them to be in their perfection and let them ask you what they want to ask you, give them the information, and sometimes you gotta stand back and say, boy, if I go this next step, I think that's gonna totally floor them, so I gotta be careful what I tell them, because they'll think, you know, oh, okay, I was good till now, but now he's a crackpot because he talked about too much. And so in my day-to-day -day practice, people come in all the time with anxiety, depression, bipolar, all these, you know, these diagnoses that I really think are just created just for suppression, for control, you know. The things we talked about earlier, like some of my uh, colleagues here uh, yesterday, with the harp and uh, all the other military black ops, I've had all these... Uh, Several people, whether it be doctors, nurses, lawyers, uh, judges, they've been on my Universal Talk radio show. Because, you know, once you start to see this, you're like, well, how widespread is this? Is this just central Pennsylvania where I live? Are we all just crazy here? Or is there people all over the world that are seeing and experiencing these things? So now all these people come on my radio show. I get to interview them. They're quite credible if you want to look at a three-dimensional way. Like, okay, so here's... Uh, Here's an MD who's quite credible, and he's talking about psyops in uh, mind control in Texas. And then the next thing you talk about somebody who's, uh, you know, seeing uh, UFOs at the East Eddy Ranch in Washington. So, you know, I travel to these places to physically experience it myself to see what the rave is about. And so with my experience and with the, the things that are presented to me in my day-to-day -day practice, and I know it's, it's a bit of a, um, a shock to a lot of people that somebody that's practicing medicine that owns and practices in their own practice is talking about consciousness in this way. But what do you do when it's right here? You know, you can't just tell these people they're crazy. You know, I, you know, opened up a little bit just to allow myself to experience and see that there's so much more out there than what what we've been told. So, that being said, I just now would probably want to go into a little bit, and I had a PowerPoint uh, presentation prepared, but I'm just going to go off that a little bit. Um, in my best guesstimation here, with all the people that I've had on Universal Talk, with all the people that come to my urgent care center, because you have to realize in an urgent care center, when you need urgent care, a lot of people don't like to go to the ER and wait 10 hours and you pay an outrageous rate, they come to me because they're heading down the, the highway and they're traveling, whether they flew in from California or China or, I mean, everywhere. I mean, I'm telling you, I've seen people all over the world. And I've seen CIA agents, FBI agents, black ops people, um, Homeland Security. And it's not like they give me this information, they flash a badge. But when I'm sitting at my exam table, or I mean, in my uh, desk, and I look towards the exam table and there's a pistol looking at me, I'm like, what the hell are you doing in my office with that pistol? And they flash a badge, and they're like, well, look, this is, I'm sick because of this. So they have to give me at least a little bit of information so I can make a proper diagnosis. So 
I've had underground bass guys come in. They had, you know, a bronchial thing going on. So they had to tell me something in order for me to say, okay, is this a fungal infection? Is this bacterial? Is this viral? So just these little tidbits of information, just the fact that they say that they work for an underground base, when people say they don't exist, now to me, I'm like, okay, they exist. Wow. Here's this CIA agent, and he'd tell me this, or this FBI agent, or Homeland Security. And so when you put all the little dots together, the pieces to the puzzle, with that, compiled with your day-to-day -day practice in life, and uh, a universal talk radio show that goes all over the world and uh, talks to dif different people, now you see the bigger picture. So what is that bigger picture? I really think that thousands and thousands of years ago, some, some alien race came that was thousands of years in advance of technology from us. And they came here for maybe minerals. I'm just saying what if, so don't take this exactly the way I'm saying it, just what if. What if they came here for like minerals or gold or silver so it would help them with their computers or whatever? Well, if they're thousands of years in advance, they don't want to do the labor work themselves. So they want to use the indigenous people on this planet to do that, but they're not suitable at this point. So they're like, hmm, let's manipulate the DNA. Let's um, change it from maybe a 12 strand down to a two and make them more suitable, add a little bit of fear into this, and then we can control them. So for thousands of years, humanity has been under the thumb of somebody more powerful and all that. And there's, like I said, there's so many variables to this. I'm just giving you the, the general gist. What if that happened way back then, up until now, where um, we've seen that through uh, archeology, span geology, there's been this cycle of events that happens every so many thousands of years, okay? And you can look. They have the ice cores to prove it. They have the missing link of humanity. And you go through and you're seeing the humans and all of a sudden there's this leap of evolution like right now. Where was the middle person? Where's that missing link? What if that every 26,000 years or whatever the thousand year is, I don't know exactly what it is, but what if at that point there was a huge shift in consciousness, whether it be from this black hole that pushes this energy through, that raises humanity to a certain point, and not just humanity, everything. I'm talking everything, because everything's energy, right? So what if, you know, all of this started out as we did have 12 strands of DNA, but we were manipulated, dumbed down, to the point where we're these powerful beings. We're all God-like. I mean, look in the Bible. It says we are made in the image of God. So if we're the spark source that most religions believe in, this energy, this love of light, this little spark from God, that makes us all gods. That makes us all co-creators. And if you follow the rule of the law of attraction, energy, what you put out is what you get back. You start to practice that once, and you're going to see it's for real. So when you combine that you are this godlike being and you can create or manifest whatever you want before you but because you're in a three-dimensional frame of mind or awareness and this density you're kind of limited to what you can and can't do you know what I'm saying it's like when you raise up and you have the DNA to uh, support what your thought is things just start to manifest and we also have to get into dimensions here also because there's so many dimensions this is another variable and layers that we have a consciousness about us. And the way I look at it, this is my personal opinion, is where your awareness is has a, a correlation with what dimension you're in. So just say you're in 3D, in this dense 3D, you have a perception of five senses right now. What if within a three-dimensional frame, there's also a fourth dimension and a fifth? Or maybe look at it as though in fifth dimension you got the other two. So say that we are stuck in 3D and we're dumbed down, we're fearful of everything that's around us and, and we just don't like where we're at because it, ever since we've been born we're like this just isn't even fair, how can it come this person over here is a multimillionaire and this person's living on the streets, it doesn't seem fair, it's not natural right away you know it's not natural so what if these controlling powers are in fourth dimension and they're stuck there because they're looking down on you and they got their thumb on you and they're so greedy and so controlling that they can't look up and they can't reach to a higher dimension. But you are constantly looking up because you know it's not right. You know this in your, your heart and soul. You want to rise out of this. 
So as you're looking up, and next thing you know, through doing the research, and you know, you get into this fourth dimensional awareness, and all of a sudden it's an aha moment, like, oh my gosh, it's these controlling factors, all, these factions, and um, that's why life is the way it is. So now you move from three to four, and all of a sudden you keep doing the meditations, and all of a sudden you tap into your higher self, and you rise into this unconditional love of light in fifth dimension, like where the angels are. That's what Jesus was teaching. He was from fifth dimension. He was walking this earth. He said, you will do these things and greater things. So that's, that is humanity's highest potential. Why, if he said we could do what he does and more, why not? He said it back then, and now we're into this evolutionary change, and I think that's what this is all about. We're going to raise to this next, next uh, whatever you call it, homo luminous. I mean, a lot of people, you do the research. I mean, it was in the, the video. That's what that one picture to me represented, was that homo luminous. That's where we're heading to. And, you know, years from now, maybe people will be like, where's the missing link? How come we went from this to this without a, how was there a, a, a jump? So, I'm getting a little off track here, but the, um, the whole purpose of this 3, 4, 5D, you have to have an awareness of dimensions. And scientifically, they're proving it now. There's many dimensions out there. And before, before this, all this new cycle and energy and change, it was like this. All these dimensions were like this. And say there was a layer of one, then two, then three, then four, then five. And I just want to get back to the, the controlling people. They're in fourth dimension looking down. So they have a little bit more knowledge than us, so they know how to control us. But what happens is we're moving out of that, and we're waking up. And instead of maybe 10% of the population that's aware but can't do anything because, you know, you can't culminate enough people together, all of a sudden all these people start waking up. And they're reaching higher, so now all of a sudden they're in fifth dimension. And they're looking down on the fourth. But the fourth dimensional, they can't even look up. They're so greedy and so powerful, they don't even, they don't realize what they're doing. They think that it's just their own reality. There's nothing greater than them. They're the gods, and that's it. But when you rise up and out from three to four to five, and you start to look down, you see the broader picture. Because from my vantage point here is different than yours down there looking up at me. If I was to climb a ladder, I'd have even a better vantage point. So the point is, with these dimensions, what's changing right now is not just our DNA. It's also the dimensions are collapsing down like this. So all the rules that applied before are magnified right now. So if you talk about law of attraction and you say, I want to manifest this for myself right now, you better be careful what you're wishing for because you're going to get it in like that. Because a lot of things that you think and you're so fixated on, all of a sudden you develop it and you're thinking, boy, I must be psychic because I knew that was going to happen. When in reality, you brought it to yourself. So the power of intention comes from this heart in this mind thing. I mean, we're, we have all these energy centers, these chakras, and what we need to learn to do is to lead from the heart instead of the head. We've been influenced by CNN and, you know, movies and just everything has just been negative, negative, negative. The fear factor is all around us, and it keeps us from going out of our houses and just having a great time with our kids or whatever. But if you start to go with the heart, you lead from the heart to the head, that's whenever the miracles start to happen. And one other thing I'd like to mention is everybody in this room, everything is energy. If you look at it from a different perspective. So what can you do in order to get through these next, these, these trying times that are going to be coming? You're watching it unfold before you. I mean, you're, you're looking at the, the tsunamis and the earthquakes and all that. If you're at this conference, you're wondering what's up. Some of you are a little more open than others, but and you don't have to take my word for it. Do the research and you'll see. You know, like I said, I've had all these people on my show and I've been doing the research. I know things are right before us. We're like at the cusp of something big to happen. But we're in duality right now and we need, humanity needs to make a choice. One other thing with these dimensions that I was talking about, there's a consciousness field that's all around us. And say, a higher percentage of the population believes in one thing, Generally speaking, that's the reality that we live in. So if 82% of the people on this planet think that Nibiru's coming and it's going to destroy us, guess what? That's going to be our reality that we're going to live in. Some of us can move out of this because you can skirt the waves, like I said, in a fifth dimensional way. So you become the observer instead of in the thick of things. You know, you're not in the fear mode. You're just like watching it all around you. So my suggestion is 
to raise your vibratory frequency as high as you possibly can before all these changes. I mean, they're already before us, but you can still ease this transition. I mean, in my day-to-day -day work, whenever I was working in a nursing home, the people that were the fighters, they had the most misery of transitioning death. They were fighting. I mean, they had this death rattle, and you're like, oh my God, just give up. You know, you felt bad for the person, and it's just like, oh my God, that's a fighter, but it's an ego thing. One of the other variables is spirit and ego. So anytime there's confusion between what decision, what should I make? Oh my God, I don't know what to do. It's a battle between spirit and ego. You can, you can bank on it. So what do you do? How do you get clarity on that? You need to start going within and meditating. You know, all these things have been learned and taught and for years and years on the other part of the world. Here it's been suppressed and it's due to control. So when you start to go within, you're going to start believing the things I said. If you don't believe what I'm telling you right now, things are going to start happening. You're going to go, oh my God, he said that. Yeah, that's right. And I might not be right on cue with your truth, but it's, there's an aspect of it that you're going to recognize and say, I'd like to check into that a little more. I don't believe exactly what he's saying, but he has a point there, whether it be me or the rest of these speakers up here. So some of us have come here for this change. And that's why I said there's various awarenesses. You know, you look around the world and you wonder, how come this person gets in the car and they run right into a tree? And then meanwhile, another person's a NASCAR driver. You're like, how can this be? I mean, if you've lived thousands of lives, then you're, you bring these cellular memories, whether they be good or bad, with you. And that, that's what makes you, you know, maybe a higher conscious being, if you will. But the point is we're in a major change right now. And it's about evolution. It's not just about humanity. It's about the earth, too. If you picture Mother Earth, and I mean Mother Earth, she feeds us. Everything around her is alive. I mean, you look at the, the, the seasons and the changes and, you know, if we can believe we're alive, there's no reason we can't believe this, this being that supports all of humanity and everything else on it is not alive and has a soul in it too, in my opinion. So what can we do individually? Even if you don't do physical things out there, like putting you know, the plastic in the plastic and separating all that, what can you do? The best thing that you can do is raise your vibratory frequency because when I do that or anybody else does that, when you walk someone else's path, all you have to do is pass by them and they try to raise. The way energy works, it tries to meet or match. So if each person in here, like we did, you participated in that, by raising this vibratory frequency, we're allowing all the positive energies to come in. And we push this energy that's going through these walls that we perceive as walls out. So now we're raising all the consciousness and everything else around us. So if you do your work by just doing your own thing and not worry about anybody else, and not worry about all the cataclysms and all the other things that are going on around you, you're doing your part. You could physically do other things also. You can be planting seeds, you could become a teacher, you know, and have the highest intent for all of humanity or the earth. I mean, those are the things that we need to do. Raise that vibratory frequency for yourself, and therefore, across the world, it happens. And then it happens with the earth as well. And it eases your transition, because we're all connected. And everybody else's transition will be easier, especially the earth. And, you know, there's debate that, well, what can we do? Because the controlling people are, have been doing this forever, and it feels hopeless. Well, as Alfred said yesterday, there's, what, 2,000 elite? And there's 7 billion people on this planet? If the only thing we had to do, and we wouldn't even have to be physical about it, let them do their thing. And, you know, what's so funny to me, it's not ha-ha laughable funny, but it's just, hmm, curious funny. When they do these harp things, whether it be a combination of harp, whether it be the earth just transitioning, that's debatable also. But regardless, if they're using harp, there's an outpouring of love that's sent to Japan, people all over the world. It's, it's broadcast all over CNN, all over, and there's some fear involved, but there's also, oh my, let's pray for those people. When you pray, here's another variable. It's in a congregation like this, in a church, it's not the building that creates the miracle, it's the people. Each one of you have your own soul, your own God-like thing, and that's where we get into co-creation. So thought becomes reality. We're all praying for the same thing at the same time, that energy comes together and that's how a miracle is manifested. 
we don't get taught any of this stuff in any of the religions. They put you in, you know, I don't want to down religion. They have their place. In fact, you know, before there was religion, I might have been in a more negative way, but I've risen to religion. It made me a better person. I spread my wings, and now I'm up higher looking down at religion. It has its part, and so does everybody have their part. And that's why you have to look at things in unconditional love and look at it in perfection because you can say and you can dwell on the negativity but what good came out of that? What did that opposition bring as a positive thing for this whole shebang which is going to be this evolution of change in consciousness? So I was supposed to go through like 73 pages of this I don't know what's more interesting me just reading and leafing like this. I'm kind of just going off of what's coming through right now. And I'm kind of being tapped in and I'm just being the toll. The same with the healing that many of you received this morning. Um, I'm just a toll. I, I have, it feels good for me to be the messenger, the communicator, and provide some information that I have acquired by the research. You know, it's really uh, empowering to be here and allow you to allow me to speak to you and say, hey, look, what if this? And then all of a sudden your brain starts thinking, you're like, oh, yeah, maybe I should try that. And I'm telling you right now, if you start to meditate every day, a couple times a day especially, all these awarenesses that I'm talking about are just going to come clear. It's going to be, the clarity is just going to be there. And you're going to be at the right place at the right time. If you're looking on the internet, though, or you're looking on CNN, and you're like, oh, God, I've got to check up on what's going on in Japan right now. They're feeding us this negativity every day, all day. Chemtrails, and it's what's in the food. They've infiltrated everything. I don't want to say this out of fear, though. You need to be empowered and knowledgeable to know this stuff is going on. What can I do about it, and how do I get out of it? And for the most part, you know, if you look at it in a three-dimensional way, you're, you want to get physical about it. Pick up some guns and let's go knock these guys and kill them. And that doesn't work because what you put out is what you get back. So instead of that, use this power in here. Lead from the heart. What does your heart tell you you should do today? Wake up. As soon as you wake up in the morning, before you do anything, sit there and say, I'm in gratitude for being here. I'm helping my soul grow. I want to help humanity. What's my mission for today? And be grateful that you're here to do that because, you know, outside of yourself, you've come here. You decided. We've all had, some people call it a contract. I think that, you know, we're sitting outside this whole thing and we decide, okay, I'm going to meet you when you're 31 and I'm going to meet you when you're this and I'm going to help you with this and there's an equal exchange. You'll help me with that. Before we incarnate into this, that's how it happens. At least that's how I believe it happens. So this consciousness, this being, this energy being that's, inside this physicalness, if that's the way you want to look at it. Outside of that, when you pull this outside the body and you're sitting in the soul here, there's nothing but total perfection because there's no judgment, there's no fear, there's no doubt. It's just perfection. It's just light. It's energy. But whenever you bring yourself from a higher dimension down here, and some of you are probably thinking, why does this feel so dense and I want to go home? You don't know where home is, but you're like, I want to go home. This ain't for me. So another thing to, to realize is there's a veil before you. If we're these powerful beings, then how come we don't know it? Well, you know what? If I knew I was a God-like person or I lived in heaven, I guarantee you I wouldn't want to be here. As soon as I was born, I'd be like, I want to go back. This is too dense. It's too thick. It's too problematic. Well, I don't want to deal with these other people. Let them deal with it themselves. So there's almost a blank or a, a, a veil before your eyes so you can do what you have to do. And that's where ego and spirit comes in. You learn whatever you've got to learn in this lifetime through your ego. And through your experiences, you muddle through life with your five senses. And you allow spirit to guide you as well. And different teachers will walk your path. You won't even know. You'll be praying to God about something. And next thing you know, this teacher comes along and helps you with what you were just asking for. And today, more than ever, I'm telling you, the veil was like this. It used to be all these dimensions were stacked up and you'd have to say a prayer and six months later it would like pop, it'd come out. And you're like, oh, there's what I was asking for. I, I asked for that six months ago. But now, more than ever, so you've got to be conscious of your thought. If you're more negative than positive, you might want to realign because, you know, this happened to me about two weeks ago with the Japan thing and all that. I was in a down and out place. I mean, I was like, oh my God, I just, I was beside myself and I was in doom and gloom. And all it took was either finding a YouTube 
that was positive, which is rare, that I haven't found a lot of them, but <laughs> there's a lot of negativity out there. Or a, just a friend that comes by and says, do you realize you're in your ego right now and you're in fear and you're in your root and all this stuff and you're like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. I was so wrapped up in this negativity. Then I rose out of it and then I started doing the work of what I consider my own work and doing the positive things that we need to do. And um, I think I have about, what, five minutes left? Eight? Okay. So I don't want to go into the next person's... Uh, lecture, but um, what I'd like to recommend is finding uh, whatever you can find to raise your vibratory frequency. That's what we all need to do. It helps just yourself, or not just yourself, but everybody and everything around you, because everything is energy. And uh, so meditate or go within. Um, think positive. The positive thoughts that you have are put out, and that's what you bring back to yourself, and it makes everybody around you happy as well. There's just simple things like that. And uh, live your truth. Live from your heart to your head instead of your head to your heart. And uh, I guess that's the end of my presentation. So any questions? Does anybody have any questions? Oh, okay. Oh. All right, no negative questions. There we go. Hi, I was wondering if you ever uh, delved into light therapy? Light therapy? Yeah. Um, most of the information that I have has been downloaded to me. I tried not to taint myself with various things uh, just because when you put a name to it, it's more specific and it's isolated. If you told me about what you're, you're talking about, I may have been doing it without even knowing it. Well, we have uh, a man, he, he, he developed a system almost 100 years ago of using the 12 chromatic colors. He was a oh, yeah. contemporary of... Uh, of the Tesla and Edison, and he was right here, 25 miles away from here, in a little town in New Jersey. Right. And his son is still around, and they, they still have meetings. They're nonprofit. They put out. They just put out material. They don't, you know, they just put out books and information. I I don't use it per se, but I am aware of it, and I am aware of the, the spectrum that we talk about with the vision and stuff like that. Each color has a a meaning behind it. Like green would be like a healing. and right. Like uh, right. Archangel Raphael, when he comes through as a healing, that green energy, you can almost, when you close your eyes, I'm, I'm feeling him right now. My whole body's just... Uh, and it's funny, it's another thing I forgot to tell you guys is ask and just trust that it's going to be there. To, the angels will be there to help you. But yes, that's, that's positive. It, it's a reality. And uh, there's been some research, there's machines out there now that mimic what a human being can do. It's more focused and all that, but it's mechanical. So I don't know how effective they are, but it's the same premise. I mean, for, we're notorious, human beings are notorious for mimicking nature. You know, we take a look at one thing and we build something similar to it, and then it, like a bird, we'll make a plane that has wings. And so, yeah, that's, I believe in what you're saying. I don't, I don't use it per se. But it is, a, it is a good tool. I like that. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, yes, uh, you mentioned frequently, you, I, I assume, I'm sorry, I came in a few minutes late, but I, I take it you work as a psychologist? I'm a nurse practitioner. I do family medicine. Okay. Well, you mentioned often seeing people who work with agencies like the FBI and the CIA. Well, I, didn't, I don't work with them per se. Like what, They just happen to come into my office as a one-time visit. Right, right. Well... Yeah, I, uh, a few years ago, I read this book by George Hansen titled The Trickster and the Paranormal, and he devotes a whole chapter of the book to government disinformation, and he makes mm -hmm. a pretty persuasive case mm -hmm. that government agents supposedly acting independently have intentionally targeted the paranormal community and often feed disinformation. Absolutely. So what, what do you do to try to protect yourself from being misused in that way? Well, <laughs> that, that's where discernment comes in. And... Uh, when you start to rise in your vibratory frequency, 
You can see BS a mile away. When someone comes at you and they're like, bup, 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 you're, you're like, liar, 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 you know? <laughs> so what do you do? You go within, you meditate, you raise your vibratory frequency to that point that you can see the truth. And if it's not your truth, you're going to know it right away. So does it exist? Absolutely. But that don't mean you have to own it. Another thing is taking control of your own power. I mean, with day-to-day -day life, with medicine especially, patients will come in to me and they'll say, here's what I got, this and this, and I'll tell them, this is, these are your options of what your disease process is right now. And what do you want to do? They'll say, well, you tell me what to do. What, what do you want me to do? I'm like, no. You, I'm, and this is an informed decision for you. This is what I know about what's going on here. These are the options you have. And you need to take control of your own power and not allow someone else to take it. And that's another thing that's really going on in this planet right now. Anybody else? Yes. Hold on one second. All the way in the front. Hi, I really liked your talk. Thank um, you. In your practice, mm -hmm. um, well, I'll tell you my experience. I have type 1 diabetes. Mm -hmm. And I'll just make a statement. I have found that like cancer, there's a lot of money in diabetes treatment, but sure. not a cure Right. For we diabetes. only have a cure for like 12 things, yeah. literally. Yeah. And um, I don't think there's an incentive to no. find a cure mm -mm. because of the economics of it. Do you use any kind of um, homeopathic or spiritual, um, mm -hmm. to suggest anything mm -hmm. to right. diabetic yep. patients? In my practice, it's pretty unique, especially on the East Coast here, because I offer my patients Reiki energy therapy, if you will, or hypnotherapy um, and traditional medicine. And I tell them where they can go, like they can either do it at my office, and I suggest, I always say, look, you don't have to come to me like I'm trying to get money out of you. I would rather you, excuse me, make a decision and then go to somebody else besides myself so I don't feel like I'm trying to take your money. But the option is there. I'll do it for you, but this is what you should do. Just generally speaking, uh, hypnotherapy works well because it's a tool to get to the inner brain to allow the suggestions of what is internal. You're already, you can heal yourself. And once you start to believe it, the only reason you can't manifest something that you want is because you have the belief you can't because someone else told you you can't do that. Since birth, your mom's like, don't do that. You can't do that. You're going to get hurt the whole way up to here. So uh, another thing is I hired a person. Uh, her name's Terry Ippoletti, and she's here today. And I would definitely recommend you talking to her. She's a powerful healer. She's a psychic. And she's going to be downstairs. But she came into my office, and we started to do channeling. And there's speculation about that. When you're in the lower echelons, yeah, you can be influenced by the government, remote, and all that. But the higher you go, you know you're in these, these greater realms because the angels are with you, and it's all positive that comes out of it. So um, we had a, a gentleman that was, uh, I'll get with you in a second. Um, we had a gentleman that was, uh, he had cancer, lung cancer. He came into me, was to a couple other uh, traditional doctors. He had this chronic cough. And I said, I just had this gut feeling. I said, I think we need a chest x-ray. He was a smoker for 30 years. He worked on elevators. He was around dust. I said, hmm. So did the x-ray. He ended up having pulmonary uh, carcinoma. And uh, the oncologist took his power away and says, you'll be dead in two months. He came to me, and I said, what do you think? He says, I'm gonna be, you're going to get a Christmas card from me. And this was like in August. I says, I would like that. So myself and Terry worked on this guy with hypnotherapy and Reiki energy. He was around like a year and a half later. And the only thing that I could say that didn't totally heal him, like he didn't heal himself, it wasn't us, we were just the tool, he wouldn't quit smoking. He knew that was the, the catalyst that's causing his cancer, and his body was rejecting. He's like, look, just quit, just quit. And he wouldn't, he just loved it so much. And I can't stand in judgment with, uh, I love the guy, he was awesome. He had this heart of gold, but he just didn't want to give it up. And towards the end there, that's what I really think, if he would have just said, okay, you know what, I respect my body and my temple, and, you know. So, yeah, we do, I offer it, and that's why it's unique to the East Coast, especially because... Most people are traditional medicine, that's it. All right, we've got time for one last quick question. Okay. 
Hey, uh, thanks a lot for all your information. I just wanted to say, are you familiar with EFT? Um, define that for me. Uh, you're, you're, Gary you're, Craig, uh, Dr. Kalman, the uh, tapping technique for uh, psychological relief. I've heard of it. I'm not well versed on that now. All right. I just want you, because I see where you're coming from, you might want to check that out. Thank you. And I just wanted to say, as far as diabetes go, what do you think of, uh, I've had some people I know into this, uh, eating raw, total raw diet for a month uh, mm -hmm. reboots the pancreas and mm -hmm. uh, cures mm -hmm. diabetes. I, I've heard that also. I haven't done any personal research with it, but... Um, Anything that is a dis-ease in the body anywhere, you can heal yourself. You eat the right foods, you get the right exercise, you have a belief and you're healing yourself, it will heal. But the problem is, we're constantly bombarded with these chemtrails and the foods that we eat. If you eat fresh fruits and fresh foods like you're talking about instead of processed, you respect this inner temple that this spirit or this soul is housed in, and you get rid of all the stress that's around you, which you know, I try to tell my patients that, do you have stress? Oh, yeah, I got stress. Everybody does. So how do you alleviate that? You've got to go within and meditate. I, I just want to chime in on that. Yeah. Um, uh, th this uh, lady in the front uh, said something about having type 1 diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, I have, um, uh, it's not type 1 or 2. It's a, a latent uh, t they call it 1.5, I believe. Okay. Or it's they're reclassifying it as a type three. I was diagnosed about four years ago. What's and your hemoglobin A1C? I haven't had it done oh. in a little while, but um, I just recently completed a one-month-long, uh, completely vegan, completely yeah. uh, raw, and mm -hmm. completely organic diet, and yeah. I stuck to it strictly for right. one month. Right. And uh, it appears to have worked, and my awesome. sugar levels are completely within normal awesome. levels, no matter what I eat now. Awesome. Hey, you know, um, <laughs> that's awesome. One, one last thing that I'd like to say is I have this diet program that I do in my office. And it, it's just miraculous what people, when they start to take care of themselves, and you get motivated to start exercising the way you're supposed to, 20 to 30 minutes a day that breaks a sweat to get the cardio going and you eat the right foods, you get the right amount of sleep, you start shedding pounds and all these, this extra tissue that most of humanity has on this planet, especially in the United States, these beta cells and all these things aren't supposed to be there, so they're causing havoc in the body. Well, if you get rid of that and you start treating yourself with respect and you start to feel good, you feel euphoric when you run, the endorphins and everything start to go, you know, and it becomes a physical thing. I've seen people cure from all kinds of things. I'm telling you, like uh, uh, diabetes and hyperlipidemia, hypertension, hypothyroidism. I've never had anybody get off of a thyroid medicine before until they started doing these, these diets. And I'm like, if your thyroid is dead, how are you producing Synthroid? Nonetheless, it's working. So it even shocks me, and, and I'm in this other world here for the most part. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph.